so Berto, we have been talking about Black Mirror season four. Yeah. And we keep trying to get through the season. <laughs> it takes a lot. Quickly. But uh, we have a lot to say. We have a lot to say. Yeah. So I thought we would really try to power through. How many do we have left? Two. Two episodes. Okay. Uh, season four, episodes five and six, which is Metalhead and Black Museum. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so Thank let's make sure we get through it because <laughs> we have limited time here. All right. This is the Psychology in Seattle podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Kirk Honda. I'm a marriage and family therapist in Seattle, Washington, and I'm also a professor at Antioch University, Seattle. My name is Umberto Castaneda, and I'm currently working as a janitor at a tech museum. At some point, do I also say I'm a podcaster? Do I say I'm a... But I guess that's implied, right? It is sort of implied, yeah. Yeah, anyway. And I'm also a supervisor, which... Yeah. which is I'm not mentioning. Is that sort of implied? That you might have to re, uh, pre-record your credentials and play them at the beginning. Spend like 15 minutes going through. Yeah. <laughs> because like at this point in my private practice, half of my private practice is, is supervising therapists. Right. You know what I mean? So it's like, it, it feels weird to leave that out. But anyway, so spoilers galore. Spoiler. We haven't seen, go watch. Yeah. And the... Uh, especially Black Museum, if 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 it's spoiled for you, it ruins it. Oh, definitely. Yeah. So don't. So watch episodes five and six, season four. Uh, Black Mirror. Okay. So Metalhead, Berto, directed by David Slade, British guy. He's made a number of films like Hard Candy, uh, Thirty Days of Night, The Twilight Saga, Saga Eclipse. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's made a number of different music videos, including Stone Temple Pilots, Stereophonics, Muse, Ter- Tor- Tori Amos, David Gray, System of a Down, The Killers, and many, many more. He's he's directed some television series episodes like Breaking Bad, Hannibal, American Gods, etc., uh, and and many others. He's so he's quite a, quite wow. a prolific uh, director. Uh, of course, this episode is written by Charlie Brooker. The main creator and writer for all of Black Mirror. It stars mainly Maxine Peake, who is a British actress. She's been on a lot of TV shows, movie and stage productions, none of which I have seen. (laughs) Just this huge list and nothing that I've seen. I think there was one thing that I saw, but she was like a minor character in it. But anyway, so let's go over the plot and then talk about the good and the bad. Sure. So the plot is, is that Three people are driving somewhere, and and we realize pretty quickly they're in a po- post-apocalyptic world. It seems something pretty bad has happened, at least in the area they're in. Right. And they arrive at a warehouse, and they debate these three people. They debate about whether or not to go inside. And they, they're they talking about a boy who is dying and only has seemingly like days left to live. And the woman says... Look, I, I promised my sister we'd help him. We got to go into the warehouse because yeah. I, I promised my sister we'd help him. In fact, we all promised my sister we would help him. Um, plus, in this warehouse, there might be supplies that we need. And so they so they all agree that, okay, we're going to go in this warehouse, but uh, it's a huge risk. And we don't really know what is at risk. Right. We, we don't know what they're worried about. So they go in. So, but clearly, it's bad enough that they would risk going into this warehouse. Yeah. Clearly it's important enough to, to go inside. Right. Which you're alluding to the fact you didn't like the ending. What? So so before they they get what they're looking for, so no, they find what they're looking for, mm-hmm. but they don't show the audience what, so we have no idea what they're looking for at That's this right. point. They're, they're going to this warehouse, they're trying to get something that's very important to them. Very important. You know, as you said, important enough to risk their lives and, and we don't see what they, and before we, get to see this this little robot little guardian this, looks like yeah little little robot uh who is just sleeping there gets gets alerted by their movement looks a little like a dog like a robot dog well yeah so it looks like the boston robotics yeah you know the if anyone's seen those videos on the internet it looks like a little horse like a small version of it yeah it looks like a little version yeah. like a like a like a I don't know a Chihuahua sized <laughs> version of or a, a miniature Schnauzer if you will version yeah. of it. It has those same kind of legs and it, right. it has that same kind of body and and it doesn't have a head as much as it just has like a sensors sensors yeah. on the front and and it, and it even looks kind of cute 
That's right. You know, it looks like the sort of robot dog you might have as a as a fun pet or something. <laughs> and immediately the tension, you know, this is slow motion shot, which is pretty awesome. And and the it um it it instantly starts this little cute robot starts attacking them. Yeah. And it kills both of the men. And the uh, robot gets into a car crash trying to kill one of the men and actually succeeds in killing the guy. And the, its leg is stuck in, a, in the car crash and, right. and it has to actually like rip it, one of its legs off in order to get free. Mm-hmm. And, it's, and it's the leg that has the gun on it, by the way. Um, and the woman, she manages to get, get away. And she goes on this long journey. Most of the episode is about this cat and mouse game that she's playing with this robot as it's trying to find her and kill her. And we've seen at least a couple of weapons on the robot. We've seen something that comes out of like its head that shoots out shrapnel. Yeah. And then it's like a little grenade that shoots grenade. out shrapnel and when the shrapnel gets in you, it's a tracking it's device. Got a little tracker. For for all the other robots. That's right. And it wasn't clear. It seemed like not all the shrapnel pieces were trackers, but some were. I think all of it was. Okay. Yeah. But um well I was I was saying that because like the woman had a few, but anyways. And then the other one was the gun, which he the doggy or the horse or whatever lost in that car crash that you mentioned. It also uh, can hold on to things like a knife, for yeah. example. But anyway, so uh, she goes on this cat and mouse game with the injured robot, and she's also injured. And uh, she seems, t- from the from the way she's reacting to it, she does not. It, it's clear she doesn't think she can go head to head with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. She, she's just like you got to get away from these things, or else they're going to kill you. Yeah. And she gets in a final fight with it, and she actually manages to kill it, and it dies. But just as it as it dies, it shoots a bunch of those tracking devices into her. That's right. And then she goes up into a bathroom, and, she, and she's about to uh, cut out all of the tracking. You know, they're in her face and her arm, and, and she's like, you know, she's thinking, if I don't get these tracking devices out, other robots are going to mm-hmm. find me and kill me. And so I've, I've got to do that. Plus, I can't go back to home base because I'll I'll drag the robots with me, That's and right. so I got to take these out here, and uh, and then she sort of realizes she has too many of them, and one of them's like in her neck. Oh, okay, like blocking probably her artery. Oh, uh, okay, so that makes sense. <laughs> so so she decides to kill herself. Yeah, and she does, and then the camera pans back, and it's sort of like okay, what that was a grim ending. Yep, uh, our three protagonists. We're killed, yeah. <laughs> and this long, drawn out—you know—it's sort of it, it. It's sort of like Terminator, the yeah. movie. But it, instead of Sarah Connor winning in the end, she gets she dies. killed <laughs> by the Terminator robot. And the the camera pans back, and there's this beautiful music, and we go back to the warehouse, and we see a whole bunch of these little doggies running around. Right. We see. Oh, I see. There's there's a lot of these mm-hmm. robots, you know, and she had reasons to kill herself. Yeah, there, she wasn't. She wasn't going to survive one almost, right. let alone a pack. Right, right. <laughs> so the the camera pans over the landscape, goes back to the warehouse, and we see what they were trying to get for this sick child, and it happens to be a bunch Penicillin? of- Penicillin? Oh, wait, what was it? Happens to be a bunch of teddy bears. Oh, a teddy bear full of antibiotics. Well, I guess we don't know. <laughs> but anyway, so before we get to the ending and how you don't like it, let's talk about the good things. Okay. Did you like the black and white, Berto? Um, Yeah. Do you think that was a good choice? Because it was-, it was I think it's the only black and white Black Mirror episode, if I remember right. Um, it was. I I thought the look of it was bleak and good. Like it, I I, I liked. It felt gritty. It felt uh, depressing in a in a good way. You know, and it definitely sold. Those are a lot of things I liked. I liked how it looked. I liked that it made me feel sort of desperate and helpless. Yeah. And I do yeah, I, I loved how the characters, it was specifically the, the lead character, the woman, the way they did the costume design, the way they directed her, the, yeah. the writing, it, it felt very real. Like a lot of these movies and TV shows will instantly pull me out of it when I, when <laughs> I think, oh, that's not realistic, right. you know. And like, they must have worked with Boston Dynamics to get at least... I, I'm pretty sure some of that stuff was was actually a little robot they were filming, and then they probably CG'd a whole bunch of stuff as well. Oh, I don't think so. I think the whole thing was CG. No, I bet you they worked with them. So you think there was an actual little robot? Yeah. I don't think so. 
I th- I think I think that whole thing was CG. I don't think there was a single real robot in that entire episode. We should read up. Yeah. Uh, but hey, let me put it this way: if they, if none of it was filmed with a real robot, I would imagine that they consulted with Boston Dynamics. Um, at the very least, they were going after yeah. that exact because it looks just it looks like the next generation and a miniaturization of that yeah. robot anyway the suspense was good uh, the writing i thought was excellent it, you know one of the things that i also hate about a lot of writers is that or producers who pressure them to write in a particular way is that they always will provide like a backstory it's sort of like with um the matrix or even star wars for that matter there is a elegance and beauty to not giving a backstory. Yep. That's why episode four Star Wars is so good. That's right. That's why it was so good was that you enter this story mid story. That's right. This princess well, is trying to get away. We don't know who she is. We don't know where these robots we don't we don't how did Darth Vader yep. where did the who who is the Emperor? Well this is why I got in this big argument with some folk that were saying because we were we were agreeing that Snoke was could have been treated better. Like they could have treated the whole Snoke thing better. But we disagreed fundamentally on why, because they were saying that one of their main complaints was that they didn't know the backstory to Snoke. Right. And I was saying that you didn't know the backstory to the Emperor. Right. And they were saying, well, yeah, but you knew it was called the Emperor. And I'm like, come on. It's like, so, so we, I mean, but we argued for like an hour about this. Yeah. Well, my, my big uh, analysis of that is that if you saw episode seven, yeah. And then went online or talked with your friends and spent hours and hours speculating about the options of who Snoke was. Yeah. You know, some people thought Snoke was uh, Mace Windu. Some people thought Snoke was Jar Jar. Some people thought Snoke was... Uh, Jar Jar. Uh, uh, <laughs> there were several other theories, right? Uh, and so, so you spend all these hours like... You know, and then you start developing pet theories where you're right. like, "Ooh, I bet you." I, to me, I bet you anything. Snoke is so and so. Sure. And then you go watch episode eight, and then Snoke dies. You're like, "What?" You're like, "Oh, you're so let down because you had spent all this energy outside of the movie doing something that was not related to the movie." Because when you watch <laughs> episode seven, Snoke has almost no purpose. Right. He's just a. Pl- he is the emperor from from. Empire. He's a plot device for Kylo Ren. Right. That is it. He has, he, there's no, you don't care. Like, if you just watch episode seven, there's probably literally 25 seconds of scenes that Snoke is in. It's like the Emperor and Empire. Right. And no and, one complained about that. Right. And, and so it's like, um, the fact that you're disappointed is because you participated in too much speculative <laughs> conversations. It happens to be these two people didn't, but... Still, <laughs> you're absolutely right. And I to think me, most of them did. When when I saw that happen, one that was an amazing scene in the red room. Yeah, and yeah the fight. very pretty. But also, I was like, you know, that is a good move because you want to go into episode nine. We already talked about this, yeah. but you want to go into episode nine with Kylo Ren at the at the top. You know, like you you because because Snoke something's got to happen to Snoke at, in episode, at some point in the storyline. And you don't want it to be exactly the same as, as Return. Yeah. You know, anyway, the point yeah, is, is that in this episode, Metalhead, there's... Why are you n- changing the subject? We're talking Star Wars. <laughs> there's, there's no backstory. Right. There's no, there's no prologue. There's, it's just like this snippet in the middle of a large story right. about this, these three people, really only one person and just one robot. Yeah. And there's this whole other world outside of that. You know, it's kind of like Walking Dead. Some the best episode of Walking Dead is the first episode. Yeah. Because there's this huge story that is going on, but really we're talking about one guy yep. and his efforts to survive. That's right. And you get a sense like, yeah, he exists in a world. We don't know the backstory. We you know, cuz I think he wakes up or something. Well, by, by the way, this is one of the reasons I loved. Uh, what, what was the name of this movie? Came out a couple of years ago, where uh, it starts with this family. They're they're in this house, and clearly something has happened. We don't know what it is. And at night, 
something happens, some something comes. And then these guests come in because they their car broke down. Oh, whatever. yeah. It was a comedy. Uh, wasn't it a comedy? It wasn't a comedy. This was pretty serious. And, oh. then, and then, you know, they have rules in the house. Like, like listen, you can't go out and you got to lock the door and all these things. Um, and then the shit goes crazy. I can't remember. I don't remember. Oh, it was called uh, Out There or... Oh, okay. what's well, be, what's out there or something? Like that. It was great. Yeah, and it was because, or one of the thing, one of the reasons, it's it was a slice of time. And did these they did lives. they give a backstory? No. Oh, yeah. So so now in some time, sometimes you want the backstory. You right. know, sometimes you got to have like the Mad Max. It uh, comes at night. Yeah. Okay. That was it. It comes at night. You got to have the 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 uh, Road Warrior Mad Max backstory uh, pro. You know, the beginning of the the pre role where you have yes, like yes. uh you know gas and nuclear bombs going off and stuff but but it's pretty uh economical even in road war you know it's pretty quick but in this in this episode they never explain it and i love that i just thought like right. a simple yeah, because really that's secondary to the the very distant second to the main story about a woman who is on a mission and she's trying to survive and then she doesn't yeah <laughs> And and seeing that whole struggle and what do you walk the feeling you walk away well what was the feeling you walked away with like don't worry about the teddy bears but right 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 after before she before the ending I got, I got that feeling of the helplessness and sort of how they were in my mind they were trying really hard for something that obviously meant a lot to them and at least survival it felt pointless like yeah. wow. They're, they, this is over. Yeah, I just, if, you know, you got this sense of like the the robots are gonna get everybody. Yep. And there was it's, really no way. Give him over, man. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I also thought that it it was an excellent choice by Brooker to make the robots look like a step just a step further yeah. in terms of the robots that we're making today. Yeah. Um, which uh, I thought was a great choice because as soon as I saw that little guy, I was like, oh. And that could happen. That f Yeah, that yeah. was the other thing was like, this could happen. Right. Like in, I don't know, 20 years, 30 years even, there is a high likelihood that one of those things can be made. Well, I mean, right this second... You could put uh, a robot uh, in in a house like ours here, uh, and if it's got a weapon on it, what are you and I gonna do? Right. Oh, close the door. Well, it's metal. It's just gonna like shoot through it, and it doesn't care. It doesn't get splinters. Well, not today. I mean, the 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 reality of robots today is they do not have the capabilities. So put a de detonator on it, and it blows itself up, and we die anyways. Right. So that, like. What I'm saying is if someone wanted to maliciously deploy a robot into a house and cause death, they could do that today. Right. It's, it's just not going to be a sophisticated robot. Right. right? But with, with how fast things are moving, I could, I could see in our lifetime, uh, yeah. you know, I've talked about a lot of uh, speculative futurism uh, when it comes to, is that the word futurism? Yeah. When it comes to um, the things that are on Black Mirror. And a lot of times I'm like, there's no way we're going to see the, the, this, but right. this I I can absolutely because because it doesn't require AI, it just requires well it, it does a, a it's, form of AI, yeah, but but it's, it's not like a human AI. Right? And in fact, I'll go further to say that there's things they cut corners to make the plot work. Okay, that they did that in reality, sadly, they, it's like the robot enters the room and she's covered herself up so the robot can't sense her because they show us that apparently the robot just got sort of like a an um sort of a, a, an echo acoustic sort of navigation system. Well, but so already there there is right. tech that can detect um, from motion, detect audio and from audio detect motion. So she's in there breathing. The robot could, could detect the subtle movement in that sheet she was behind or whatever it was. So it, sadly, the robot would have caught her there. <laughs> right. Yeah. There are self-driving cars today yeah. that have a better yeah. ability to detect human beings. Now that, you could say, you know, it's a smaller form factor, maybe not enough room for a bigger computer, blah, blah. Yeah, that's uh, fine, but fine. But come on. Doubt that okay. one, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, one, the compactness of it, two, 
related to that, the ability to have an onboard battery that doesn't completely ruin the design. Because that's, that's, right. that's a big thing now is like the the battery for these things, you know, is the, the power supply is a, is a major barrier because yeah. they can be extremely heavy, you know what I mean? And uh, so, but that's, you know, that's growing, you know, batteries are getting lighter and smaller and smaller. And was the idea that it was like solar powered, so it was recharging with the sun? I didn't really quite get that. I think it was actually just conserving energy because it's just like, well, why would I, because it was actually shutting down at night too. Okay. You know what I mean? So I think it was just like, I think that whole scene when she was in the tree was to show that these robots, they're not malicious. They just have a program. Yeah. And so it runs into a program of there's nothing to do. Yeah. So shut down. Yeah. And so it shut down and then she would count like how right. long it would take for it to turn back on again to check. But anyway, um, the other thing I thought was great was that they made the robot look cute. It was a very cute robot. Yeah, right. Uh, and then coupled with that, one thing that I didn't understand, but that's because we didn't have the backstory is... If it was just a guard robot for the facility, it's sort of pointless to give chase because then you risk to getting destroyed and, and all that. that that's not my read of it. My read of it was robots are roaming on a mission to kill. Okay, so you didn't think that robot was attached to that factory? No, anyway. I think it was, it, it had roamed there and didn't have anything to do and it just parked. But see, then, then I, that's the, okay, this is when I start pull, pulling apart right, that, layers that I don't I hadn't like. thought about that. That's a little weird. It's like, yeah. why would it be on the top shelf of this? Why wouldn't it just be at the entrance of the warehouse? And why didn't they run into others randomly? And then that leads me to the ultimate reason why, in the end, I hate this episode. Okay, let's talk about that. If I am to read the ending as presented, which is that they were trying to get this dying boy a teddy bear, but they're fully aware that this is a robot apocalypse that they could die that they could die then i'm going okay well who was making decisions here because i understand the boys die is their last wish i'm sorry there's only a few humans left in this little room and we need all of us yeah. and if we're gonna go anywhere it's to get supplies period right and if there's robots roaming around because because uh, you're right you're probably right about your interpretation which means i was thinking it's that the robot only engaged because they broke into the facility if the robots are roaming around freely, like get, like you're not doing this. You're just not doing this mission. And I wish that, I mean, I didn't need to see what was in there. Right. That was sort of like a pointless part of it. Yeah. They Because I had already gotten the idea. Something important. They were going after something important. I don't know the backstory. Yeah, that would have been cooler, I yeah. mean, obviously, given your reaction. And I think a lot of people's reaction, which is that... How cool would it have been if you just never knew? No, because like even if they, so even if it had been injections of antibody, so what? So imagine they show us the box. <gasps> oh, little Timmy needed his injection. But so like that doesn't but, add anything. But they even established in the beginning, which was that whatever they were going after wasn't going to save Timmy's life. Right. It, it was just something that he wanted. Yeah. And I it guess, was like something to soothe him before. Okay, he, I actually did. I missed that part, but... But that left alone, I think I would have just forgotten about and been okay with my life and not have had to stew about it for weeks. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's funny at the podcast I was talking about or at the live podcast, I was how everyone rails so hard against things they don't like now. And that's me, right? <laughs> well, you're railing about one part of it. Yeah. I mean, in the on the scale of things for season four. I enjoyed it. Before the teddy bear scene. I enjoyed it. Well, like what ranking? So we got yeah, right. We got hang the DJ US Callister. Hang the DJ USS Callister. It, that that that's our favorites, right? Yeah, that's right. And then and then we got uh, I love I love Archangel below that, and then I like Crocodile. Oh, I liked Crocodile next. Then it was probably Archangel. Well, it has to be because yeah. It's oh, okay. Well, but before the teddy bear, would Metalhead be above Archangel? Oh wait, you? we haven't talked Metalhead yet. Oh, no, that is the one we're talking about. Sorry. Um, because uh, I think Archangel bubbled up above Metalhead for me. Before the teddy bear, I think maybe Metalhead would have bubbled up. Uh, before. Uh, if, above I, if they have just left the teddy bear scene out, I think I would have liked Metalhead better than Archangel. Okay. But so, I, I right now like Archangel better than Metalhead. So I wasn't bothered by the teddy bear thing. Uh, I, was, I was kind of like, oh, okay, that's interesting, but... I had already sort of absorbed the story by that point, you know? 
and that, that, see that's the kind of thing that if there had been a, a, a backstory now would have helped because if teddy bear had some significance yeah but it, it doesn't so uh, well it's, i think that was the that's the point brooker's trying to say is not only did these people get killed but it it was for something that not only would you would be surprised by but was a little pointless but i think his i think another point he was trying to make was that they all knew they were going to die. You know, I I, th- I don't think any of them had because the way they talked and the, when she would radio back to headquarters, it kind of seemed to me like they didn't have a plan for killing the robots. You know what I mean? I think I think it was basically a statement of these three people knew they were eventually going to die, and they just wanted to do something nice before they all were killed by robots. You know, I, that that was kind of my take on it. But anyway, I, I just put, for the record, if we're ever in a situation where we're in a room and there's a dying kid and he wants a teddy bear or she wants a teddy bear, I will dress up as a teddy bear and pretend to be a teddy bear. Yeah, Birdo bear. But um, I've been getting emails from people saying we should talk about. In fact, I got one today about just this episode because they love it. So there's some people that consider this to be one of the best Black Mirror episodes ever. It was well done. I I, I, I do agree that it was well done. It's I think just, if you I think if you like apocalyptic shows, this is like one of the best ones. I, th- I think if you like zombie shows, I imagine this would be kind of enjoyable for you. Yeah, no, and I I mean, I was watching it, and that first half, I was thinking. Oh, they're getting a lot of stuff right here. Right. And I really enjoyed it. And towards the second half, even before the teddy bear, I started drifting a little bit because it was, um, it always happens actually with any sort of monster or robot or any antagonist, like major alien antagonist. There comes a point at which they need to decide whether it's truly as unstoppable as they made it initially right. or if the hero gets a shot. Right. And so towards the end, I was like, well, really? It didn't sense her there? Okay. And really? She really killed? Okay, fine. But okay. I was willing to be there and it was a grim ending and all that. I, I guess I just got so turned off by the end, by the very end scene because I thought it was, it was pointless and it sort of made the whole... Now I wanted to know the backstory. Before I didn't care about the backstory. Now I wanted to know about the backstory. Yeah, and of course, Black Mer- Black Museum. We both put in the final, uh, yes, fi- final slot. Yes. Um, yeah. So just some other thoughts before we take a break. Here was that. Um, now I know some people hate us for saying this, but I I thought of this episode as not being very memorable. You know, there's things about Crocodile. You know that. I even though that wasn't one of my favorites from season four, that I will never forget. You know, that's that there's right. certain things where I was like, "Oh, that's interesting." There's this metalhead. I, I'm there's really nothing because there's no conundrum. Yeah, it, it's humans are trying to survive. Yeah, and there's not a moral question. I mean, I suppose no. you could say that there's a moral question of like how much do you sue the child before they die? I suppose, but and what's worth it or something. But it's just a depressing. Uh, downward spiral, one directional into something horrible, you know? That's right. Which, which I re- can respect. And, and on this, now, yeah, what I will say is even the Black Museum episode, when you compare any, the, the crappiest of Black Mirror episodes to every single TV show that is, that is even just out today, mm-hmm. let alone things that existed in the past, these the worst black mirror episode is probably in the top 0.1% of the best TV that has ever happened. Yeah. It's great quality stuff. You know, so to say like black museum or the episode season one, episode one, these are terrible episodes. It's, it's just empirically not true. All you have to do is watch, uh, what t- two men and a, what two and a half men or <laughs> two and a half men just watch any episode of two and a half men or any episode of full house or fuller house hey, hey them's fighting words <laughs> and it's just like oh you know you got to realize like uh depending on your mission statement when you sit down on the couch michelle uh, were you telling the truth about that uh you know you just got to be like uh yeah i mean any complaint i have uh is take that into context plus when I watched even Black Museum, I watched it. I was riveted. I was like, huh, I wonder what's going to happen next. Oh, you were? Hmm. I mean, okay. <laughs> we'll get into that in a second. But but the other thing is uh, that I thought, and this is only afterwards, which was w- the there are so many ways that a human, a group of humans, 
especially when they had supplies. It wasn't like they were naked. You know, they they had supplies. Yeah. There are so many ways in which humans would have figured out how to kill these little guys because they weren't, they weren't, they you know, they these weren't um, Arnold Schwarzenegger level robots. These were tiny, you know. Well, and, but I mean, that's the point: is that a, a machine you, you can't you can't. Un- you can't unsnap a, a piece, a wrench, or stop a little clamp from clamping on but, your hand. But, you le- know? but let me just throw out, just off the top of my head, ideas that, based on what we saw, yeah. probably would have worked. Like, all you would need would be some kind of netting or even a thick blanket, um, especially if it had, like, a weight on it or something, and throw it on it. Because the thing wasn't, you know, invincibly strong as evidenced by, you know, what we saw. I, I, this is true. I, I've tried to get my cat into a, a crate to take to the vet. Well, And it can be hard. Yeah, cat. Well, cats, forget about it. This thing, its joints were, you know, straight up and down. It certainly had agility, but it wasn't. I'm, my point is, is that the other thing was that she used paint to, like, disable its vision ability. Yeah. Well, why don't they all just have, like, a bucket of paint in there? in their backpack. Right. The other thing is, is shotguns actually work against it. Yeah. Why didn't they have shotguns yeah. with them or any kind of ammo? Well, that's where I'm saying like that. Or a stick of dynamite. That's or, why, that's why I thought it was just that it was guarding the facility. And that's why I, at, 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 as the, as the episode progressed, I kept feeling more and more that I wanted more backstory because then, I, then I started wondering those questions. And I think, it's sort of like you don't need the backstory as it's great if you can make it without the backstory but then you need to be self-contained if there are too many things that you show me that that prompt questions that you don't answer that's when i start going like well wait because how did we get here because all you would need would be just some sort of makeshift netting to just to like keep it disabled long enough so you get away because clearly they all they thought about was getting away from these things right and so they just didn't seem to have any measures of protecting themselves. And you imagine, you know, like when you watch Walking Dead, they have they develop yeah. like a technology. They learn how to what the what the uh, possible you know the, ways the, of protecting yourself. The, the, are. This is true. I, I will throw out that I mean, at first the thing does have a gun on it, and it has uh, robotic skills with the gun, meaning yeah. it's not missing. No. So even the idea of throwing a net on it, like you got to get close enough and stuff like that. So I, I can understand, and it runs, it outruns you. There, it's not going to get tired. But that's it's, the point. You, you throw, know. you throw a net, you throw a very heavy net on the thing, and then you bolt, and it gives you enough time. They, but you got to have the net with you. <laughs> like you got to be holding the net. Yeah. And they didn't know the robot was there. But they knew robots might be there. Well, that's why I'm saying, like, that's where it starts. Or you have down. a, you have a bucket of paint, or you have, and which it was also like it, it, sh- it should have had redundant. Uh, sensors it shouldn't just be disabled by a little yeah you're going on. off point what I'm saying is like I, I off the top <laughs> of my head thought of just a couple ways of at least slowing it down that they didn't have at all and she improvised in a house uh, on the fly and uh, but I, I, I didn't I didn't think about this until yeah like a week later when I, I mean, was like huh I wonder if why you, if you're gonna do the paint trick you have to you have to know the thing is coming to hide so you could get the paint before it sees you because if it sees you, you're dead. And if you're going to do the net, you got to be carrying the net around you and you have to have enough time to throw it on it before, again, so I think only knowing that it's there and hiding uh, effectively and then doing it could have that effect. All right, let's take a break. When we get back, let's talk about the last episode. Let's do it. All right, we're back from the break. Uh, become a patron of the podcast if you haven't already. Go to patreon.com. When you become a patron, you get a- access to all the episodes, even the ones that are only for patrons. And there's probably, I don't know, 100 or one or 200 episodes that are only for patrons. Right. And arguably, there are our best episodes. Also, I published my book recently. It's my very first book, and uh, people are buying it. So uh, that at least means I'm marketing it well. I'm getting good feedback. It's That's called great. It's called Multi-Role Clinical Supervision. Multi-Role Clinical Supervision available on Amazon. 
Um, okay, so let's talk about the last episode, Black Museum, directed by Colm McCarthy, Scottish guy, who has directed a lot of TV shows, British TV shows, Peaky Blinders. Have you, you haven't seen that. I haven't seen it, but I've heard good things. I, I like the first season a lot, Peaky Blinders. Doctor Who, Sherlock, and a bunch of other TV shows. Oh, I do like Sherlock. Uh, written by Charlie Brooker, of course. And the f- so this story is basically three, the, this episode's three, three stories in one. Yeah. And the first story about the doctor, the physician, is, is based on a short story written by Penn Jillette. Yeah, I saw that. In the 1980s, which is interesting. Uh, it stars Letitia Let- Wright. She's a British actress, and she's been, she's young, so she hasn't had a long career, but she's been in some TV and movies. Uh, most notably, she's going to be in Black Panther and uh, the Avengers Infinity War. Mm. Did you know that this year has both Black Pan- Panther and Avengers movie? <laughs> Wow. So and so she's in both, track. and I think she has some major role in that. And she's also going to be in Ready Player One. Oh, which I'm looking forward to. Although after seeing, we the, did we do a podcast about Ready Player One? No, we should. But after seeing, so that's Steven Spielberg, right? Ready. Have Player you one. read it? No. Oh, do you want to read it before? Uh, maybe. But okay. but anyway, I I was really looking forward to seeing Ready Player One because you know Spielberg, you can't go wrong. But then I watched the post. And I wait Spielberg. I mean, what was the last good Spielberg thing you saw? Well, I liked Lincoln. Oh, I didn't see Lincoln. <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, I could the last see... thing I remember was Indiana Jones four. <laughs> well, but that had uh, uh, George Lucas. Lucas, and there's even an interview with Spielberg, Spielberg, who's like saying, like, look, Lucas really wanted to do this and that, and so no I... one forced his hand. Come on. But uh, and what else did he do recently? Um, that I, lost that his I touch. Right. So so after seeing the post, there were scenes where it was laughable. Oh, there's this one God. scene where there's a bunch, because it takes place in, in the 70s, early yeah. 70s, and there's a bunch of uh, uh, Vietnam War protesters. And it's just this one scene, and it's trying to place it in time, and it's also part of the plot. And it is, you remember that uh, Kylie Jenner uh, Pepsi commercial? Kylie Jenner, Kylie Kardashian. With the, with hand, the, when the protest is going and you hand yeah. the Pepsi and yeah. the sort of scandalous. Yeah. yeah. This, that's what it looked like. Oh, I mean, yeah. not that bad, but it was in yeah. that direction. It was like, I was watching it. I was like, this is, this is one of the cheesiest scenes about, oh, about wow. anti-Vietnam war protesting I've ever seen. It looked like a commercial. A, pe- a bad Pepsi commercial. Yeah. I was <laughs> like, this is, and I was like, Spielberg, man. And it had all the wow. elements of Spielberg, you know. Right. It had the sweeping crane camera, lots of different things going on, you know, s- you know, costumes, people yeah. saying things and like protesting. People were saying things. <laughs> yeah. um, it also uh, stars Douglas Hodge, who is an English guy who is acting like he's an American guy, and. I don't like it when Black Mirror gets English people or British people to play Americans. Mm. I, I'm sure the reverse is true too. Yeah. But like, are there no American actors to, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, it, it's, it's bothersome. Like I can't get away from when I hear him talk, I'm like, he's, You've he's, got an accent. Do, yeah, he's trying to hide his English accent. It's yeah. just like annoying. Like just get an American guy or just make him British. Who cares? Right. Like, why does he have to be American? You know? Anyway. Um, he, this guy's been on a lot of TV shows, movies, and theater stuff, of which I've, I haven't seen any. Okay, so let's go over the plot real quick here. So a woman, this is kind of complicated, but I'm just gonna I'm just gonna race through this, okay? Because we don't have a lot of time. It's like uh, it was a Tales from the Crypt kind of a, uh, episode where they had different segments and a similar vibe, yeah, and a similar campiness. Yes, really. um, a woman stops at a remote. Uh, uh, in her car she stops at basically a gas station but it's electric car so it's a charging station and it's in nevada i looked that up there and it looks very nevada uh but her, the charging station is out of business so she has to charge her car with a solar panel and it we see that it takes three hours to charge her car with a solar panel so she has nothing to do and she's she's kind of wandering around and then she comes upon this this black museum and 
it's not open and she's kind of banging on the door and the guy lets her in and gives her a private tour. And there's a there's a bunch of objects associated with crime and murder, like Char- Charles Manson, right. you see Charles Manson, um, and, and many other crimes in the Black Mirror world. Uh, for example, they show the crimes from the White Bear episode, uh, the woman and the man, actually. They show uh, one of the bees from Hated in a Nation. That's right. They show the tablet from Archangel. They have the bloody bathtub from Crocodile, uh, you know, the one that she bashed yeah, his head in right. with the, with the um, hammer. Uh, a mannequin from, uh, or I see, uh, in White Bear, yeah. Uh, the egg thing from White Christmas, where they yeah, put right. they put that clone of you and mm-hmm. you know the clone virtual AI of you and that little egg, uh, uh, the lollipop that was in um, USS Callister, um, and so on. Um, they also uh, so then the owner of the Black Museum, he says that he used to be a neurotech and he used to work for TCKR, which is the organization that was in San Junipero, actually. So he works for the same people that worked on the tech for San Junipero. So we enter the first story. Uh, so basically the Black Museum guy uh, owner is talking to this uh, random pay, you know, this random customer uh, and just kind of telling her stories. And he tells her the first story, which is about Dr. Dawson. And he's at St. Juniper's Hospital, by the way. <laughs> and he would recruit this, this neurotech guy, would recruit people to test out neurotech. And he meets a physician who is frustrated with being uh, unable to accurately diagnose people. He convinces the physician to install a device in his head that gives him the ability to feel the feelings of his patients, um, which makes it easier for him to diagnose and actually heal them. And uh, this is another Easter egg where there's two rats and one of them's named Kenny and one of them's named Hector. And this is referencing the characters from the Shut Up and Dance episode, the pedophile episode. so he installs this thing where so he can empathize with his patients. He becomes a very good physician. Then he realizes, ooh, I can become a very good sex person. And then um, he is connected to a man who dies and it like shocks his brain and then he becomes addicted to pain. And then he becomes addicted to like killing people while he's connected to them. You yeah. know, it's a downward spiral for this guy. And um, at, uh, at some point there's another Easter egg where the recruiter tells the physician, look, you're fired from the hospital. Go home and binge a miniseries, he <laughs> says. Um, but anyway, he starts inflicting major pain on himself, and it gets very gory. He starts pulling out his own teeth and stuff. It gets really nasty. And then he kills a homeless man in order to feel his his death pain. He enters a coma, and he's caught and detained, but he's forever in a coma, and he has a smile on his face because that's how he you know, be, went into a coma is because he actually killed someone and he, you know, had, right. had his final pleasure in life. Um, then we, so that's one story. Then we see a second story. We have a young couple and their baby. Uh, the woman gets hit by a truck, but she doesn't die. She never, and she doesn't, she doesn't wake up, but she can communicate through this one thing that's basically like a A or B, like yes or no. And this recruiter, the neurotech guy, convinces the husband to put her consciousness into the husband's mind. And that happens. And then so she can see everything. She she experiences everything that her husband experiences. Right. But she can't actually communicate. So she can only communicate to her husband because she's in the mind. Um, and at first, uh, things are going fine. But after a while, they start to fight and it gets bad. And she, he starts turning her off occasionally. And then he, he, you know, he can't take it anymore. And so the neurotech guy is like, okay, well, we'll transfer her consciousness to a teddy bear. And the teddy bear can only say either I, you know, um, say a positive statement or a negative statement, essentially. And then at the very end, we see that the kid who the teddy bear was given to discards the teddy bear. And, right. and then that's that story. It's like there's this consciousness of a woman who's stuck in a teddy bear and she can only say like these two statements. I can't remember what they are. And it's this grim ending. Uh, then we get this third story. A man is convicted of mur- murder. Uh, the recruiter goes to him, makes a deal, and says, you know, I'll give a bunch of money to your family if I can take your mind at the point of death for you. And so uh, that's what happens. They take his brain, they take his soul, his mind, as, right as he's being electrocuted on an electric chair. Um, and he puts him into a virtual prison cell on display in this black museum. 
and people come from all around. They pay a bunch of money, and they can press this button and put this virtual man in a virtual uh, electric chair and basically uh, feel some kind of justice by killing right. a virtual human being. Uh, it's it's a way for people to get revenge for various different things and get off in various different ways. And uh, he also takes a copy of the dying man and puts him in a little keychain fob thing that you you know people can take with them as a keepsake and you know this this virtual man just gets executed like thousands and thousands of times and there's thousands and thousands of copies of him being tortured tortured, like yeah it's just like a living hell um and then the woman who he's giving the uh tour to she uh, reveals that she's uh, uh poisoned him and earlier, because yeah. she messed with the AC, and then she poisoned water, and he drank the water. And then she puts his consciousness, she steals his consciousness, puts it into the consciousness of the virtual man in the prison, which happens to be her father, and then executes both of them, but then keeps a keychain of the recruiter yeah. in a perpetual hell. And then, and then burns the burns the black museum down. Brings the teddy bear with her, which still has the woman, which still has the woman in it. And then we see that her own mother is actually in her brain. Uh, and then they drive. They got away. to enjoy the revenge, and yes. they drive away. So just a few other Easter eggs. There's a 15 million merits comic at some point. Also, Yorkie and Kelly's dresses are on display from San Junipero. Um, there and all the human faces that are on the wall; those are all various crew who worked on the show. And I'm guessing that there are several references to shows we haven't seen yet. I'm just guessing that Brooker mm-hmm. put some Easter eggs for future shows. So before we get to the bad, which there are many, let's let's talk about the good. So what what can you say that was good about this episode? Crickets. Uh, <laughs> well, I would say that it raises some questions about the justice system. It raises some interesting questions about racism because, you know, race is de- and about uh, uh, capital punishment. I guess so. But in, I mean, it's just like, I mean, I'm just in saying a contrived I, way. I'm just trying yeah. to figure out like a, like a, yeah. a good angle, you know, from I, this is a very British way of looking at America too. Sure. Yeah. Cause it's like, Oh, they have capital punishment. They have the liquor chair. There was also like a theme of not having health insurance. And I mean, I'll say the germ of the ideas in each one of the little stories is interesting, right? Totally. One totally. of them is, Hey, would, would having more empathy for pain directly allow you to do certain things like diagnose or something? The other one, like, would you be able to live as a secondary consciousness inside of a brain? And how would that be? Is that what a schizophrenic brain? Like, those are interesting questions. Right. And then the third one of like, well, could you, um, could you have suffering inflicted over and over and over in a simulated brain? They're interesting questions. So I guess that, you know, yeah, it's a positive right. thing to have interesting questions in life. Right. Other questions are about the ethics and research, or and about capitalism to some yeah. extent. Um, and I will also say that all the actors did what they could. Yeah, was, as usual, good acting. Yeah, well filmed. And the ending, I thought, was an interesting kind of twist. I didn't see that coming. I, I mean, I think we talked about this earlier. I did not see it coming that that girl was the daughter of that guy I, right. didn't, I did not see that coming I certainly didn't know since we hadn't even seen that story till the last story Yeah, I had no idea what the connection but was but as soon as it started you uh, not as soon as it started I think I certainly knew that dude I, I knew it was no accident that the dude kept, kept complaining about how hot it was mm. but I thought it was going to be that he was going to do something to her mm. like trap her and, oh. but then towards the end when he was the bad guy in almost all the situations <laughs> I started realizing, uh, I think he's going to get his comeuppance. Huh? Huh? Comeuppance? Uh, uh-huh. Okay, so let's talk about the bad. Um, to me, as soon as it, pretty much right at the beginning and then throughout, I kept thinking to myself, this doesn't feel like a Black Mirror episode. No. It feels like some other show yeah. that's trying kind of to be like, like Black Have Mirror. you seen that new show? It's sort of like Black Mirror. But not quite as good. Yeah. yeah. I can see that, you know, they're trying, but it, you know, it doesn't have the black right. mirror magic, you know? Like, Metalhead was my second to last favorite episode from season four. But 
is eons better yeah, than this right. episode. And I got to say, it had that feeling of a clips show, you know, in sitcoms yeah. and series where it's like, well, we ran out of material this quarter, but we could do a clips show. Right. Like, I think Seinfeld would do that sometimes. Right. Where they're like, remember that time when this happened? Right. Yeah. And so, look, the references to me felt so felt so cheap because it wasn't a normal episode of Black Mirror in which you caught oh my god that did you see that that was the one thing it's an episode where everything's a reference right so it's like well of course you can reference your own show cuz you it's your own show right so <laughs> up until the point where we see references to other shows i was i was like okay where is this going you know right. I, I you know i wonder i wonder what kind of amazing a uh, journey Brooker's going to take me on this time. But, you know, five, 10 minutes in the show, as soon as I saw the Archangel tablet, I immediately said, this episode <laughs> <Uh-oh>. is, <laughs> this episode is stupid because to me, I'm like, okay, so let me try, you know, let me try to reconcile. So let's just try to reconcile <laughs> yeah. what this show told us. Right. So in the past, in our world, in this in this episode, in the past from this episode, right. they used to torture convicted criminals mm-hmm. as in the episode White Bear. That's right. Uh, and they also, in this world, in the past, they had a horrible robot bee pandemic <laughs> yeah. that killed thousands of people. <laughs> um, also in this world, in this exact same world, probably yes. around the same time, uh, as these other things happen, a woman was beat by her daughter by a t- by a, with a tablet, mm-hmm. and not killed, mind you, just right. sort of bloodied. And some for some reason, she that, saved the, the tab- tablet. Is saved and ended up in this museum. And then somehow she gave it to a museum for some dumb reason. That's right. Um, so there's that. Same world. After- was, I mean, are we to understand that became a famous case? Right. <laughs> Why? Why would it be a famous? Was it because it was the class action lawsuit from those tablets? Because there were several of those tablets right. and several, and so, and clearly that was the tablet. It wasn't just a tablet; it was the tablet. And like, if they just showed a, a non-broken tablet, I I would have been like, okay, that's actually better. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they showed a broken. If it's it's the freaking you know broken right. tablet, and so yeah. We also are uh, told by this episode that in the same world, a horrible murder of a young couple and her and their blind child mm-hmm. happens, and someone sold the bloody bathtub to a museum. Which, by the way, uh, the theme is now broken, right? Because it was like, well, keep in mind these are tech murderers, tech uh, murders based on a special tech. The bathtub, that the bathtub was, is special tech, right? What? That, that was just a murder. <laughs> that was a murder. That had nothing to, it, <laughs> right. I mean, of course. How tech, they catch her has something to, but why not then have the, what are those things, the little machine that can read your thoughts or something. But every murder probably during that time <laughs> yeah, had every, some, had some was, tech angle. That wasn't the first time they tried that. Well, and of course they would probably say like, why are you reading so much into it? It was just references. But I'm like, no, no, no. It was an episode shock full of them. Right. And... This Black Mirror, you know, some of the episodes are so in, internally consistent. That's right. That it's like, again, if it's if it's Tales from the Crypt, and it's, it's always and it's always been Tales from the Crypt, <laughs> then okay, it's just a, it's just another silly dumb right. episode. But I mean, this felt more at home as a webisode. Like, yeah. oh, did you see they they as preparation for season five, they right. released like a little. Web is a funny but webisode with even, references. Even then, though, I'd be like, "Come on, <laughs> come on!" So again, this this innocent family is murdered right. by this horrible human being, and not only do they keep the uh, you know the bathtub right. with the blood on it, but they sell it to a museum. Yes, a um, very specific museum from the guy that worked on the tech that actually was responsible for several of the things that yeah. are in that museum. Now, you could say, well, the guy bought it, somehow found it, but who keeps... Uh, uh, right. Why would you have kept the bathtub? What was special about that murder? Right, nothing. Oh, I know what was special. It was in the same series on TV. Right. Um, <laughs> in the same world, a, ma- a man is found dead in his apartment 
and he apparently died while playing a video game. Right. He's still hooked up to the video game, and he's dead from, like, lack of nourishment. And someone decided to take a random lollipop that was near the computer that he died at and display it. Well, and this is the world that you can clone people into, like, clone their minds and bodies into a video game right. from DNA. Right. So how would you how would they have known that there was a significance to that lollipop right how would they have known any of that stuff right you know what i mean there wouldn't be any evidence of that and and yeah it's just sort of okay also in this same world again probably around the same time in the past people used uh they they used to use copies of themselves as personal assistants that's right and put them in eggs and and this became associated somehow with crime Yes. Which, uh, how? how? Well, because that one guy was trying to get people to confess their crimes, remember? Yeah. But why <laughs> wouldn't they, anyway, why wouldn't they display his yeah. heads? I don't know. Um, and someone somehow found out about two women who died and lived happily ever after in a virtual world <laughs> and then figured out what sort of dresses they wore in this virtual world. <laughs> And then decided to recreate those dresses in the real world. In the real world. And display them in, in, this, museum. in this museum for why? No, <laughs> no crime occurred. It's, it's just, a black history museum. It's just a story. It's just a regular story. The, San Junipero is about a regular story about two humans who did something that a lot of people did. In that world, right. it, San Junipero was filled. Yeah. All the full-timer virtual people were people who decided to go there upon death. And the and the visitors were people who were going there temporarily who were still alive in the real world. But Kirk, I think you're missing just how meta it is to have a black museum about Black Mirror episodes as an episode in Black Mirror. Yeah. It's mind-blowing. So I Morty. just so not only that, but I was bored. You know, you kind of laid it out. It was like yeah. each one of those three stories was a very linear situation. It's like, oh, look at this interesting tech. That's right. Oh, and things get bad. Yeah. You know? And I just I didn't care about a single one of those people. I mean, the only person I might have felt empathy for was the woman who was caught for the couple where yeah. the woman was caught in the head. And there I was and she quickly became a dick. Right. She was a dick like right away. Right. She was just like, so you're not gonna wash your hands? <laughs> How disgusting, you know what I mean? And he's like, lay off me, you know? Yeah. And then she, you know, he looks at some woman, you know, looks at her butt and he's, right. and she sees it and she's like, How dare you look at her butt? Yeah, you know? I, I, that was part of the thing that turned me off is that usually the, the episodes I love the most, they don't just lay out the problems that come from the technology in an obvious way. You know, they don't just go, well, you know, they show you, okay, we can upload a brain. Oh, imagine now all your thoughts could be public. Oh, isn't that a mind blowing? No, that's not mind blowing. That's in this one. It was like too pedestrian. Right. It goes. Oh, imagine if she was in your head, she could see when you look at a butt. Oh my God, that's crazy. Yeah, and you know women. And you they, know women. Yeah, it's so they'll just start nagging you. That's you right. Know? That's not a deep analysis or, of the uh, tech. Imagine if you could have empathy for other hu like really true empathy. Well, it's clearly you're going to end up killing people. That's if, right. To get the pain, like it just it was like. It just every every part of that was just so linear and dumb. That is the that is the when you in in all those movies which were fun but they're supposed to be silly where you get the monkey's paw and all of a sudden you're like oh, the only wish I can do is gonna go wrong and then I'm gonna kill people. It's like you expect them to be over the top. Right. Like for example, in the lawyer episode or the the guy who uh, y everyone recorded everything that they had. I can't right. remember the name of that episode, but. Uh, he starts to suspect that his wife is cheating on him. That's right. And then and then slowly realizes. Like that episode, as you're watching it, it feels very relatable. Yes. Even the 15 million merits episode, which That's is right. like completely <laughs> in a foreign world, I could relate to yep. it. In this episode, there wasn't a single character that I could relate to. But let's yeah. get it. But in the last minute here, let's just get into the tech. Um, the uh, In the middle story... S they wanted us to believe that they had the tech to hook up a device to someone who couldn't wake up from a coma or something. That's right. Or who's locked in. Like they, they didn't really explain that very well. It was right. like, uh, is the person locked in or are they in a coma or whatever? Anyway. And, and they have the technology to actually communicate through a AB device. 
the 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 person in the coma is able to say either A or B, right. meaning a yes or no or you know whatever. So they have that technology. Um, they also have the <laughs> technology to extract, not just copy, no, extract someone's conscious, complete personality, right. all their memories, all their impulses, and put it into a computer. Right. Okay. They also, they also have the ability <laughs> to put within five seconds that entire personality, all the memories, all the impulses right. into someone else's brain. And they didn't indicate that it was electronics attached to the brain. It was like they put it in the neurons themselves. Yes. Like they it programmed was a, the neurons to it was have a the permanent yeah. placement. Yeah. They, they put the device on it, downloaded the thing. Yeah. Not only that, but then they have the ability on top of that to extract it. Yes. After it has been put into your brain. And also to pause it, unpause it, all that stuff. Right. And, but. <laughs> I know where you're going. <laughs> they only have the ability to yes or no it if, <laughs> if it's in a teddy bear. Like, do you know how stupid that well, is? Well, not only that. So there really was nothing they could do for the person who still had their normal brain and everything else. Right. That, that that tech doesn't exist. Right. It's like the whole thing in episode three where Amidala dies. And it's like, why, why'd she die? She gave up the will to live. Yeah. Hold on. We got all this tech and that's why people die. So it, it's similar where you like you just outlined four miraculous developments just, in human history. We're talking like. I'm just rough guess, like 2,000 years from now, maybe. Or 20, that, but still. Yeah. And and yet, they cannot do anything about our coma. Sorry. Yeah. And, Sorry. well, and if they can't communicate, it's yes or no. Yes. Like, they, that is it. That's it. Um, that is ridiculous. And the teddy bear, really, I mean, because today's toys clearly can barely say yes or no. There's yeah. no toy we can think of that has a range of expression right. or any robotic little musical thing that you can request songs from asking a, a female voice a question. Right. On top of that, the notion that you could put an entire consciousness in the space of someone else's brain right. is just without any kind of neurological problem. And we're only using 10% of our brains, Hondi. Yeah. I hate to break it to you. Yeah, right. And in, and back in the savanna, the savanna. <laughs> yeah. That whole episode, I was like, whoa. Like every other episode, you know, they try to say, look, this is just like in the um, white bear episode or white Christmas episode, they um, they say they had to put the little bean under the under the skull, under yeah. the skin, and it has to stay there a long time yeah. and slowly absorb. Right. And then when you take it out, it has, that's a leap to some extent, but it's like there's some time. Yeah. A and then you put it into a little egg and it can't really, but it can communicate and it can, yeah. it, could, it can, if you give it, it uh, its capability, it yeah. can communicate in all the ways, you know, it's, right. it's capable. Well, and, and, and in either case, because there are some that they make leaps or even like, for example, the Star Trek one, which we love, they recreated the whole personality from the DNA, it seems like. Which I had a problem right. with. Right. But they're only asking us to get over one major thing usually. Right, right, right. This was an episode shock full of them. Yeah. <laughs> Just like even within the stories they were writing... Uh, let alone the Easter, not even just Easter eggs, but the plot. I mean, yeah. people say they're Easter eggs. They're not Easter eggs. This is a episode in which they are saying, this is all in one world. That's right. And I am showing you the future of every episode in the past. That's right. That's not... I, this that, is essentially yeah. <laughs> like a sequel to every single episode. Yeah. Every episode of Black Mirror has one sequel, and it's this episode. That's, and that, that's and what that I'm saying. And that sort of invalidates the suspension of disbelief for almost every episode. Right. So, and then you get to the last scene with the prisoner and whatnot, and... That to me had the most compelling story of all. Like, sure. As soon as we got to that story, I I was a little bit more interested. Yeah, and and you know, because I was thinking how unnecessary it is to have to have the actual brain. Because if you have the graphics, you could holographically simulate the thing and not need to have a brain there. But you said something that's interesting that you could almost envision punitively people saying, "No, but we want to torture the brain 
forever and ever because they were right. mean and they right. killed people. Right. So I, I could see that. But at the same time, I was wondering, why go through that extent? Like, just have the simulated graphics of the dude getting electrocuted. But that's the point. People <laughs> paid money right. because they wanted to actually, Torture they wanted to come as close human. to torturing a real human as yeah, possible. But anyway, right. so my worry moving forward is that Brooker is crawling up his own butt. As a lot of these shows do, you and know, they're getting out of ideas and they're and they're falling in love with themselves. Mm. This happens to a lot of shows. It happens to it happened. I, I know I'm gonna bother some people, but there's a lot of shows where the first season is excellent and past that. Uh, in my estimation, the writers and the producers and the directors and the actors are crawling up their own butt. House of Cards, uh, The Walking Dead, um, Heroes. Um, <laughs> Heroes is more like they were crawling into a butt. I'm not sure whose butt that was. <laughs> uh, lost. Uh, other, you know, there's so many. Sh- ev- I would even say Sherlock to some extent. Like the first few episodes of Sherlock are amazing. And then after that, it's like, oh, I wouldn't say they're crawling up their own butt. I would just say it sort of dips in. It, they sort of run out they of do things have a to dip. do. But there's so many. Uh, uh, Peaky Blinders, honestly, the first episode, the first season of Peaky Blinders. There, there's so many shows where the first season is just amazing, and they get so much accolade and so much attention media wise, right. and so many people just saying you are a god. Right. And then the writers, they just think they can do anything. So you know, like in, like, you- like in The Sopranos, when uh, what's his face wrote the episodes about. Uh, what's his face, Gandolfini being in a dream for five episodes. Yeah. It's like, you've really crawled up your own butt at that point. <laughs> I like that. But but actually, in all fairness, there are series that manage to go many seasons with a really high quality, and maybe they'll have a few off yeah. episodes. Like The Wire. Uh, like The Sopranos. I mean, like The Sopranos. You could say that about that episode. Yeah. True. But I mean, overall, they pulled it off. And, and um, what's it called? The uh, Breaking Bad. Breaking I, Bad. Breaking yeah, Bad. Yeah, yeah. Breaking Bad. Um, and you know, just other great long series, uh, yes. 30 rock parks and rec. I didn't see parks and rec. Before. Oh man. It's so good. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, yeah. I, I'm worried because this final episode, I was like, wow, yeah. if, if that, but, uh, but, but on the other, on the positive side, on the optimistic side, every season we have an episode for the most part where That's we're true, where we're like. That was not a. Nah. That was not in the category. <laughs> yes. You know, uh, season one, episode and they did one. Two seasons last year. Yeah, they're it's gonna crazy. do two seasons this year too. It's so, the, uh, so there's gonna be another season that'll come out later wow. this year. Yeah. Anyway, well, we made it, Berto. All right, so glad we made it. We did every episode of Black Mirror. Nice. Up to date. All right. Well, now we got to do this other thing. They told us we should watch. Uh, what? Uh, patron, or actually, I think I, I think it was Lyndon told us. Uh, I, I gotta go back and see what it was. Some but he made a request for something. Some TV watch. show. Yeah, there's so many TV shows that and movies that people. I sort of want to do a Ready Player One thing because I have very strong feelings in several directions about that. Ooh, I, I can't. But we could wait till we watch the movie. That's fine. I can't wait till I experience your very strong feelings. Well, I don't know what the movie's going to be like. That'll be interesting. Because I have the very strong feelings already about the book. You have very strong feelings about very strong feelings. <laughs> That's true. Well, that does it for that episode of Psychology in Seattle. Thanks for joining us out there. And please take care of yourself. And be careful about that last episode of season four. You might even want to just sort of fast forward through parts Skip of it. it. Uh, because... You deserve it.